Nintendo owned the year 1996. It did. It, it really did, actually. The 64, though, but this was the latest and greatest for the Super Nintendo. It, it really, so many memories. Hey guys, and welcome back. It has been, I should have counted how many years it's been since we played this on this channel. It's, Man. It's, it's been a long time, and do not, whatever you do, do not look up our old Let's Play of this game. <laughs> it's really not, not something we want anybody seeing. Uh, if you could go ahead and skip the intro here, I, I think, I think we shall get started. We don't want to give too away, we don't want to away give much of the game. Look so. at the VHSs <laughs> in here. Who has like a triple VHS player? Wrinkly does. Wrinkly apparently is the coolest Grim in 96. And guess what? Look at that right there. 103%. That was the, the time where we, we actually put on cheats to make the game harder and beat it. We did tfst, which is the only way to get 103%. And harder, which was optional to make the enemies faster, I think, and just a little harder to beat. And I think, I forget if toughest takes away the halfway markers or if harder does. I think toughest does. Yeah. And so we played through the whole game together with no halfway points in each level, getting everything. And, and, it, and when you get to the Lost World part of the game, it really, you begin to get an appreciation for what that took. And Flash never actually um, wanted to do that on like recording because it would be really hard. But as proof, we have done that off camera. Yes. And we have gotten the rank Immortal Monkeys with Cranky being a like Kung Fu master. <laughs> okay, so. That means a lot to you, but I, I never wanted to prove that we did that. It's because awesome, it was though. like we'd have to waste a large portion of our lives to do that. <laughs> Two player team, and, yeah, and what are we going to do? Let's name it. Um, let's name it a secret code number. Let's name it 2018. Okay. Because it is 2018. It won't be for long though. It's it's actually the day after Thanksgiving when we're recording this, and the the house is just filled with the most Thanksgiving smells you have ever smelled because we're having our meal today, and it, it is currently cooking. Yes. And it smells wonderful. It, this this holds so many memories because we always played Donkey Kong around Thanksgiving anyway. So that's that's one of the reasons why we won. They usually this. come out around that time. They just the time for Christmas. Out. Yeah, they used to. Yes. So press start and let's let's not have any further ado here. Oh, there were two. Oh, places. 2018 and 2019 because it'll. Okay. Oh, I get to type that part. Oh, nice. Which it will probably run into 2019, so might as well. That's put nice. That down. And then go to okay. Okay, okay. Plug it in. Yeah. Let's do this. Dixie, that was a dangerous jump. Haven't you heard all those stories about people who have injured themselves from jumping off high places into the water? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Hello there. It's me, Mrs. Wrinkly Kong. Mrs., because she's a teacher, remember? I found life too hectic at school with all those naughty crumblings pestering me all the time. If you need to save your game, Dixie, call here anytime. It's like she never said she quit. She's just like staying mm -hmm. home. <laughs> and I record your progress on my new Vid Me What's It machine for you. So that's what it is. That's, it's a Vid Me What's It machine. So here we are. Uh, that really clears things up. I wish you'd look that up on Amazon, see if we can get triple. What's that? You want to see Lost World? Which channel is that on, Dixie? <laughs> so. That, it's random what she says whenever he goes up. Yeah. Maybe. So, yeah, she's mentioning the Lost World right off the bat. So that will haunt us someday. Head to Funkies, or should we go... We can't go... To Bazaars. We first. cannot... Well, we do need to pick up some milk. <laughs> we need to go to the general store. Yeah, so let's go here. How do I sound like a nice mare? <laughs> kind of related to Banjo, I think. Uh, hello there, young Dixie. My name is Bazaar, and this is my general store. All of my brothers are scattered over these islands. I've lost them, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Uh, pop in and say hello if you meet them on your travels. <clears throat> so then, how may I be of assistance to you? So we can say, where's the shell from? Is that a mirror or nothing today, thanks? Nothing today, thanks. I just came in here to look at you. Catch you later, Dixie. I'm open 24 hours, you know. Wow. And since I'm the only one here, <laughs> you know... I, he never sleeps. <laughs> I've never moved from this desk in my life. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a fan theory that all the brothers bear are cousins of Banjo. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> so publish that on a fan site. <laughs> so, uh, Funky. Yeah. Not only did he get buff, he 
yo, Dixie, what's happening? I've set up my smoking new shop here, and that's not all. I've also brought your excellent cousin Kitty Cog along for the ride. He's yours. <laughs> he may be a toddler, but if you let him throw you upwards, you'll much reach the stars. Oh, yeah. And if you throw him, his humongous body could smash through the floor of some areas. Trust me. Trust me? Like, you've tried that? And that is how he got his dock inside. Yes. <laughs> because... He decided to start a boating business after Kitty broke a hole on his floor. I think Kitty probably jumped on his back when he wasn't aware of it for a piggyback ride, and then he thought he was being attacked by a Kremlin or something, probably Seriously. threw him, and then he landed and broke the floor. That's exactly <laughs> what happened. He was got a lot of fan theories over sleep. Yeah. So, so we're going to get in a motorboat. And, um... Yeah. Gotta go, Kong. Surf's up. So he still apparently does surfing on a lake. And we get to go in the boat. I loved this. You when mean, I was a kid. when she was young, she used to spend like, they, she used to take turns with her cousins. Yes. And she used to spend her entire turn doing that, like for 20 minutes. They got so mad waiting for me, but we had a timer because <laughs> dad is a smart dad and he knows that if you've got three kids that all want to turn on the same game, then you're going to have to use the timer. <laughs> And yeah. so I used all my timer doing that, and they warned me, you know, once the timer's over, that's all your turn you're going to get. And I didn't care. I loved it. <laughs> Which, by the way, you're going, like, every place before the first level. I'm getting itching to start this out. This is <laughs> yeah, Bounty Beach. Yeah, I still Beach. aggravate people. To Watch this. Day. Watch closely, child. Y, X, Y, A. Yay! That banana bird is really strong. He just busted out of that crystal. <laughs> mm. Okay, so now that we have that done, we are going to go and go to Lake Orangutanga, which yeah. always reminds me of that one episode title of the Donkey Kong Country TV series, which was named Orangutango. Yeah, because it was a dancing episode. Which we will not speak of. <laughs> but anyway, this is called Lakeside Limbo. Um, and it's iconic. This, this level, this this entire game actually gets a lot of hate. I don't know I, I'm why. Not, I, I don't know why either because it's not really, have I have to throw you up there. Oops. I oh no. It. What are you doing, Yumi? There we go. Uh, I, I still remember how to play this. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, um, it's not up quite to the maybe the epic level, at least at the beginning, the other two kind of, kind of embodied. Yeah. But this one... It, it, I don't know. It just really holds. I like Evelyn Fisher. I don't remember her last name now. Uh, what <laughs> was that? I like her music. And I yeah, got hit by the first enemy. A sneak just kissed you, and you were like, "Ow!" So here we go. I hate it when rats kiss me. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah, it's Evelyn Fisher did the score for most of this game. David Wise helped on a few tracks, I believe. I'm not quite sure how that works. And I believe I read that Evelyn was also the voice of Pipsy in Diddy Kong Racing and Tiny in DK64. So that's an interesting little factoid for you. Yeah. Uh, but I really felt like this game was different from the other two, but I feel like it was a good end to the trilogy. Yeah. Of Donkey Kong Countries. And if you count it as a four-part series of DK64, that was also a good end. Yes. Um, but I really, I couldn't hate on this game. I know, Ever. it's really very good. I like it just a bit under DKC2, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I think it does have its place, definitely. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> that needs to be done. Kitty is... I, I just... I'm, my attention is getting taken by the background here. Yeah, the backgrounds in this are amazing. I think they really stepped up their game even more than the first two with the backgrounds. And there are a lot of lives hidden around here, so that's good. Always a first level tradition. This uh, lake reminds me of a, a little tale about that Yumi has about lake. Yes, exactly. <laughs> because when... We always have the best segues, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> when I was little, um, my grandpa would used to take me fishing. And uh, we had this uh, great uncle, so it was his brother, who had his own lake by his place. And in and, that lake. <laughs> and his name is Uncle Ed, which will come into another tale in just a little bit, in another episode. But anyway, uh, he had this lake with a bunch of fish in it. And he let us fish in it, but he would not let us keep what we caught because he wanted the fish to breed. 
Yeah, which as a kid is like, what, <laughs> what kind what of reason is that? Like, <laughs> you, got a, you got fish in this lake, you come on. But anyway. we would go there. And so I went there for like a long time ago previously and I caught a bluegill there. It was my first fish I ever caught there. And we got a picture of me with it and it was a shrimpy little thing. So apparently Uncle Ed let us keep that one because I got a picture of it. I don't want that one to breed. <laughs> <laughs> but for most things, anything worth keeping, we couldn't really keep. But anyway, on that particular day, I was out there and we got our fishing, tackle and everything. We just skipped by Ellie without even a mention. Anyway. Ellie! <laughs> we have a niece <laughs> named Ellie now. But anyway. <laughs> Well, tell me what happened. So, uh, we got everything set up, and my grandpa, he's kind of a funny guy sometimes, because um, I can remember when uh, I was fishing, we weren't catching much, um, he tried to sit down on our little, uh, like, this little bucket that we used for fishing, and then I just hear this, whoa, and then a kind of a crash, and I look over, and he's lying on his back, because apparently he either sat in it and it tipped over, or he tried to sit in it and missed, <laughs> and he fell over onto I his back. Have, I was not there for this, was I? No, you weren't. I was a tiny child. You were, yeah, just Ooh. four, because I was about 12 at this point. Okay. But our grandpa was okay. Yeah, he was okay. And <laughs> then, uh, after a bit... I got a bite, and it so... It was from a mosquito. <laughs> no, I actually got a bite on my lure. And my grandpa, he gets pretty excited. He starts jumping up and down. He starts saying, you got him, you got him, pull him in, you get him. And I was just like barely was like breathing and I'm... elation. Yeah, and I'm reeling that thing in. And then it gets drug up on the side of the shore there. And then it looks like it's not fighting too hard, but... My grandpa goes up to it and takes a look, and then he says, You got two. And I'm like, what? We go over there and take a look at it, and there are two bass on the same lure. They both went for it and bit it at the same time, and I reeled them both in. So and apparently so, Yumi thinks she's really special. Now. That she's was a superhero or something. That's pretty cool, because my grandpa said right there, I once shot, saw somebody shoot two deer with one bullet, but I never saw anybody catch two fish on the same lure. Yes. So that was a, that was a pretty big deal because my grandpa really loved hunting and fishing. Yes. But you know what? This was a perfect day, except we forgot to bring a camera, so we never got any photographic evidence. And because the fish needed to breed, we could not take them. So <laughs> we could not prove this miraculous event. And no, it's not a big fish story. It really did happen. And well, I was not there, so I cannot. You'll have to take my word for it. <laughs> so anyway, like, how did you get in the paper then? Well... Because you told me you got in the paper. I did. That's what I was getting to. I did. To. I lied about it. <laughs> I, I, we decided, I forget if it was Dad's idea or Grandpa's idea, but we decided to write in the news article for the local paper and see if they'd publish it. And since we didn't have... I caught two fish, publish it! <laughs> and since we didn't have any photographic evidence, and I explained that in the story, I typed up the little story myself. Since our great uncle didn't want us to keep that fish. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey. <laughs> they needed to be families, you know? They needed to be free. Yeah. So, I typed that up, and then, because we didn't have a picture of it, I drew a picture of it. And I sent it in to the local paper... And they published it. And we may have that picture to show. Yes, I think we'll bring that up. We and will bring that up. Maybe the blurb of what I wrote, maybe not, I don't know. We will raid the newspaper <laughs> and get that old file for you. But the heading was a girl logs her first catch and it's a doozy. It was kind of an embellishment because I didn't say that was my first catch. I, they put that in themselves. I didn't say that. Oh, yeah, so they're making it. Did you get front front page for that? I don't think it was front page. I don't remember, but I used to get jealous if somebody got in the front page of the local paper, but hey, I got in it. I know. Oh, I forgot a bonus here. The DK here. coin. No, I got the DK coin, but the bonus. Oh, that's what I meant, yeah. The DK's coin. So if you want, we can either do that off camera or just do it really quick. I'll do it really quick while I while I tell about <laughs> something else that was that was it was a surprise when <laughs> <laughs> when you got in that paper. 
I'm gonna switch to you because you you're gonna you're gonna look for it. All right. The, um, I'm not you gonna let. You have to let, press this button. I whoa. Okay, Yumi just did that. That was not me. <laughs> switch that indicator a little bit early on the screen. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we were just remembering as we as we recorded our last episode, which was a Paper Mario episode, and we stepped outside of the room, <laughs> and uh, I. I don't know why this reminded Chrissy of it. I guess it was Yumi. the same. Who's who's Chrissy? I don't know. We keep mentioning her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was the same doorway. Anyway, we were stepping out and we were smelling the Thanksgiving smells. And then she remembered another tale. A time when she changed my life forever. <laughs> because she terrified me. <laughs> I was... Um, Which was a common occurrence, sadly. Yeah. I, I was coming into her room to, because, to ask her or annoy her about something. We've, we have written in her journal that she sometimes found me annoying, <laughs> which I... Pfft. I just thought that I had to write that because that's what big sisters are supposed to write, okay? Yeah, really? Well, you were a very good kid. Well, anyway, I was going to annoy her this fine day. <laughs> and um, she decided, since her bed is right next to her door, that it would be a great idea to stand on that and to appear unusually tall. <laughs> so that the first thing I'd see when I opened the door is her face looming about seven and a half feet above me. And then she says in this really creepy voice, she says, hello. <laughs> and I was standing on the The child edge of inside my... me ended. <laughs> my, my childhood was finished. <laughs> I don't know why this was so terrifying, but like I- He, he got scared easily, honestly. I did this like piercing little girl scream. I was like, <laughs> and I cannot replicate what it was now, but I was really terrified. All of a sudden, my sister had become abnormally mutated, <laughs> and she thought it was funny. So I, I got so scared that I started, like, breaking down, crying on the floor. I think what happened was you screamed, and then you ran directly to I, I never run. <laughs> you did. <laughs> I, was, I was surprised at your reaction. I mean, you I... quit the level, then. Okay. You got that I, I don't know if that counts. Maybe it does. Anyway, I expected you to scream and just, you know, that was it, but... Okay, it does. But um, then you screamed, and then you ran directly to your room, and did not pass go, did not click 200, <laughs> and you didn't come out, and so I figured, okay, I must have really scared you. <laughs> it was terrifying. <laughs> you have no idea what your face looks like when it's, like, so much <laughs> higher than, than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Which is something we don't do any we don't see anymore because I'm like six foot two now It probably would not have scared me anymore but um Anyway, I felt pretty bad about that after as but... well you should have <laughs> so, Because it was kind of mean <laughs> So I decided to make it up to him and I went and rummaged through my collection of toys and I got this uh, little if you watch our special, you'll know what I'm talking about, the AOMI special we did. Go and watch the entire thing. <laughs> but there's this uh, little um, stuffed pink smiley face with bunny ears, two stubby legs, and two stubby feet, which I got at my uh, puppet practice that my grandma helped teach. Well, that's some history there. And I thought, you know, I want to make him feel better, so I took that. I had named it Surprise. Because it looked like, you know, it just a, a big pink ball of surprise. And I was going to give it to you for a surprise. And I went into your room and I said something along the lines of, Flash, I'm sorry that I scared you so bad. I didn't I didn't know it was going to scare you that bad. Here's a surprise for you to make you feel better. And I gave him what would later become Inconspicuous Guy for the AOMI series. How did you feel? Surprised. <laughs> really taken aback and I was also relieved that you were back to your normal size <laughs> come back to your senses and that everything was fine between us now uh, in the next episode we've got two more levels to take on and since it will be releasing around Christmas time we've stockpiled a lot of episodes we're gonna tell you some Christmasy tales it's not one that you want to miss don't you dare click off this video click <laughs> like share it with your friends we will see you guys in that next episode see you guys then see ya